How do you feel like your defensive guys handled the conditioning and, and the work that you guys put them through? There was great improvement, you know, from the first tour of duty to yesterday. I mean, just a really excited about the improvement that we saw collectively and then more specifically about certain individuals that have really developed um, and nobody was perfect there were some up times there were some down times but just you can never replace time and relationships so over the last month and a half it was just it was necessary you know what we went through when you're putting in your vision for, for, for the defense this spring where are you where are your priorities as far as installation individual work what what are you looking to accomplish with, the, with these 15 practices well, we've got to improve, right? So we've got players in positions and position groups right now that we think they fit into. Um, and that's based off of our information and the information that we've had over the past couple months uh, just studying them. And so we're not going to slow down. I mean, we're going to, the install is going to be, we've got 12 installs over 15 practices, excluding scrimmages, and it's going to go fast. And we're going to have really high expectations for how we want to execute things. And um, the biggest message is we want to make sure everything that we took from the tour of duties, the discipline, the accountability, how we worked, that translates over to practice. And just being able to maybe the aim and the objectives a little bit different because of the football specifics, the assignments, the techniques. But how you do those things, that's the most important things that we got to be able to carry over and connect those two worlds for the players. Because I think with those two things connecting for them, we've got enough talent that it's time to really get this thing to improve in the direction we need it to go. How does having a guy like Marvin who handles himself in such a professional manner help you as a coach to have someone like that who can, who can help you as as maybe kind of a player coach and, and be able to get guys and make sure that they're someone that they're listening to a, a, as well. Right. Well, I think the role of leaders or people at the front of the unit or team are all important, right? Um, Marvin obviously has a voice here. He's been successful. He's worked really hard in these workouts, but we need more of them. And we need more from Marvin too, and he knows that. You know, so it's not... I'm very slow to identify who those people are because it's really difficult. When you, just like as a coach, it, to be a coach, you need to be the example every single day. And if you're going to be somebody at the forefront of the unit or the program, I mean, there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into that uh, because nobody wants the fake leadership. Nobody wants somebody that's going to talk one way and act another. So, you know, I'm very slow to say, hey, put this person in the front of the room. Sometimes it just happens organically. You know, but for us to really name that person, I think that's gonna, that'll declare itself here. Maybe not even through spring. Maybe it will happen through spring. Um, and really, leadership and the things that we're talking about is all just developed over time. So it's critical. It's important. If we have the right people at the top, they can help show and lead by example. So it's not always the coaches, and that is something we're striving to create. What do you hope to see from, from guys like Josh and Hamza who may not be able to participate fully but are going to be out there and be able to do some things? We've got, we've got a plan for every single player that isn't participating. So we have, you know, there's guys that are in full participation. There's guys that can't participate in any drills. And there's guys that are modified. Um, so we have a plan for all of those categories of players. And, you know, whether it's Hamza, you know, whether it's Woodby, whether it's the Kalen Brooks, whether it's Joshua Kanda, whatever the people are, um, we've got a plan for all of those players. You know, some of them can practice all the way through, some of them are limited, some of them can't practice at all, but whether it's during practice or post-practice, there's a plan for every individual to make sure that all 15 practices are being accounted for in some form of growth so that when the summer starts, they're all on the same page. Are you happy with the buy-in that you've seen so far, or are you, is it kind of a mixed bag where where you know you've got some guys here and some guys yeah I don't who don't really I don't know. feel a mixed bag. Um, we start meetings. I see eyes pointing forward. I see people on the edge of their seats. I see engagement. Is it perfect? No, but it is there. And there's intent with our football team right now. There's an intent to improve. And when you sit down there and you meet with them, like their focus is on you. And um, is it always like that? No, but for the most part, I like where we're at and I'm excited about moving forward with them tomorrow. What excites you most about that first practice on Saturday? Just being out there on the grass, you know, here at Florida State, you know, and being able to do it together with this coaching staff and this team, this group of players, that's the most exciting thing. You know, the, the drills, all that stuff, you can name the drill, but to be able to put all these coaches together with all these players, with everything that we love to do on that field together, that's the exciting part for me.